What a game. What a game. Real talk though, what the hell were those refs smoking in the final couple minutes? My god, that was a poorly officiated game. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't like blaming the refs. But the last couple minutes of that game were more than a little bit screwy. Damian Lillard, no disrespect at all. The dude is an absolute monster. And apparently he's also Dwayne Wade circa 2006 because he's going to get every single foul call if you're even in the same zip code as him, let alone breathe in his general vicinity. So in this game, you have just a... It's an offensive explosion again. But it's a very frustrating game. To be clear now with this loss, let's just lay the groundwork of what's happened now as a result of this loss. The Mavericks are locked in at the 7 seed. The Blazers are currently the 8 seed, and they control their own destiny with one game left. And they'll probably be the 8 seed and have a great matchup with the Lakers in the first round. Cool. Damian Lillard, monster. He's been beasting ever since he choked against the Clippers. Good for him. The ending of this game is more than a little screwed up, though. So, let's just get through the uh, the talking points first. This game opens with Kristaps Porzingis absolutely killing it. On fire. 16 points in the first quarter. The dude is nigh, is nigh unstoppable. Like, he is beasting. Now, when he comes out of the game, it's his usual rotation out. That's when he needs a breather. I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with was the Mavericks not going back to him in the second quarter. After 16 points and unstoppable fire in the first quarter, it seemed like he barely touched the ball in the second quarter. Now you can say, hey, the Blazers changed up their defense. They went from a man to his own. It threw the Mavericks offense kind of out of rhythm for a little bit and it threw KP out of his rhythm. All right, fine. But if you're Rick Carlisle, your job is to go to the hot hand and keep your guy going. When you get a guy that's scorching hot, you cannot let an entire quarter pass without getting him the ball. Now, the Mavericks controlled the first majority of the first quarter. They unraveled in the final minute or so of the quarter. They were up eight. They ended up trailing after one because they started getting sloppy, started stringing together turnovers and bad possessions, and Portland was capitalizing on those uh, on those mistakes. Damian Lillard, from the start of this game, was dialed in. He had, I think at half, 21 points on 11 shots. Like, the dude was dialed in. And in the second quarter, we kind of saw the same thing happen, where towards the end of the quarter, he remained, um, or the Mavericks started making sloppy mistakes. Not as bad as the end of the first quarter, but still not closing out quarters well enough. And so Dallas trails at half. It's not horrible. The Blazers nearly get an easy steal when Luka gets ripped at the three-point line, and Gary Trent Jr. gets a wide-open three at the buzzer, doesn't get it to go. So we go into the half, and you're like, all right, well, the offense is working pretty well. Luka has still been great at getting to the basket and finishing. Even hit a couple step-back threes in the first quarter, so you're like, yeah, all right, all right, yeah. We're off to a good start. KP, I don't know what happened there in that second quarter, but let's try and build on that. They would, in the third quarter, go back to KP, and KP continued to ball out. After 16 points in the first quarter, KP dropped 14 points in the third quarter. The guy kept raining threes. He had six threes through three quarters. But if you do the simple math looking at the board there next to me, wrong hand, board next to me, you'll see kind of a problem emerge. Luca, or excuse me, KP in this game, 36 points in 36 minutes, only six boards, but two blocks. Damn effective. 7 of 9 from 3. 12 of 17 from the field. He was feeling it. And Dallas didn't go to him at all in the second quarter. And then when they got him involved again in the fourth quarter, there was like four and a half minutes left. That is inexcusable. Like, that's inexcusable. He remained dialed in. Now, where I said things get really sticky for me and where it's frustrating is that the fourth quarter in general was a, a mess. The Mavericks got into the bonus early in the corner, uh, quarter and they 
kept going after it. They kept getting to the line because they were forcing Portland to foul them. So you had the Mavericks cashing in on that. Free throws were actually pretty much even in this game. In fact, Dallas might have had a slight edge nevertheless. But the difference was it's fouls that control the game. Dallas was getting to the line and converting 27 of 33 at the line as a team, but they did miss three big free throws in the fourth quarter, two by Luca, one of which comes in the final 40 seconds and one by MKG earlier in the quarter. Um, that hurt, but it kills me how Damian Lillard kept getting foul calls on pull up three pointers. He was getting it on the rip move at times, which is supposed to not be a shooting foul, but twice he was awarded foul shots uh, coming off a screen and just pulling up for three via the rip move. Like, it's, it was frustrating watching him get that call again and again and again and again and again and again and again. He went 18 of 18 at the line. I'm not trying to discredit his career-high 61 points. I believe they said it's his second 61-point game this season. Third or fourth 50-plus point game this year. Amazing. Literally amazing. But when you have a guy who's already that great and absurdly good... And then you add in the notion that, hey, nobody's allowed to even breathe on him. Then it becomes frustrating as hell because there's nothing you can do. It's like the 2006 finals, as I made that joke earlier. It's Dwayne Wade. You can't do anything against him other than try to force him into a jump shot and hope he misses. The difference is Dame Lillard can actually knock down threes at a damn good clip. 06 Dwayne Wade was not a great outside shooter. He became better later in his career, certainly by 2011, but by no means was that ever his strength. So it's frustrating uh, being put in that position. What really gets me, though, is this felt like you wasted good performances again. Like KP's game was beasting. He should have had 40-plus. That's how I feel about it. The way he was dialed in, he hits a career-high seven threes. The way he was dialed in, he should have really done even more. And that's just on, that's Luca. that's Rick, that's just the offense in general. That's frustrating. He picks up two fouls in the final two minutes, where one of which Dame charges the basket, KP blocks him, but you see on the replay, Dame threw his body into KP. I don't like the call, especially. I don't. I don't hate it. Like, I could see that call going either way. If it was anybody but Dame in that moment, I believe they let that play go. I believe they call it a block and move on. Instead, Dame goes to the line, knocks down both free throws, and KP is now sitting on five fouls. KP comes down the other way and proceeds to knock down a three, his seventh of the game. Great. Then... Uh, a moment later, KP comes back down the court, gets a mismatch on Gary Trent Jr. in the post, posts up, and you have a very controversial foul call here that ends KP's night, despite a Rick Carlisle challenge. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. has KP's arm latched, and he's pulling him by the jersey. He falls down, pulls KP down with him. They call KP for an offensive foul. Carlisle challenges, and the ref upholds it. So with like a minute 39 left, the Mavericks' best offensive player on the night gone even then maxi hits a big three uh dorian finney smith hits a big three like the mavericks are still going toe for you know punch for punch with dame and carmelo hitting some big shots for them as well um for the blazers he had a great game with 26 points but it's so frustrating in that moment because you're like wow like dame on one hand he could get away with anything and he proved that at the end of the game as well he could get away with anything on the on the offensive end. But then at one point prior to KP fouling out, Dame actually tries to foul him out earlier where he KP sets a screen on Dame and tries to slip the screen. And Dame just grabs him by the waist. But then the ref calls a foul on Dame and Lillard immediately signals for his coach, Terry Stotts, to challenge the play. What he's challenging, I don't know. It could not be more obvious that he fouled KP. Like, it's almost like he was getting away with stuff to the extent where he was like, might as well try it, dude. They're letting me commit murder out here if I want. Like, I can do whatever. And so they they upheld the original call. KP went to the line, knocked down his free throws. Great, you know. KP, 9 of 9, or excuse me, KP at the line was 5 of 6 on the day. So 
KP knocks down the free throws and we keep going. But it, it's just frustrating in that situation. And then you have the moment at the end. But before I get into the very end of the game, let me run through uh, some notes here. Hardaway Jr. had a nice bounce back game despite the last shot breaking off the side of the backboard. That was hideous. But he had 24 points on 6 of 11 from the field, 3 of 6, excuse me, 3 of 8 from beyond the arc, 9 of 9 at the line. Um, that's, that's quality from him. For what you need and expect of him, that's quality. You got 25, 10, and 8 from Luka on 8 of 19 shooting, 2 of 8 from 3, 7 of 9 at the line. Again, both of those misses were critical. They were in the fourth quarter in the final few minutes. And uh, the, the second one really hurt with just over 40 seconds, like 40, just under 41 seconds left. Um, that really, really hurt in that situation. And, you know, Luka had six turnovers in this game. I really felt like he was just okay. Now, that's the thing with Luka. He set such an impossibly high bar for his greatness. You know, like the Bucks game, for instance, like the best game of his career, that you look at this by comparison, you're like, yeah, by his standards, he was just all right. You know, he... He struggled at times to take care of the ball. He turned it over at times. He hit a couple step backs early on, and so I think he ended up taking probably too many threes in the game. And while he stayed aggressive and got to the basket and continued to finish as he's done throughout the year, and particularly in the bubble, averaging I think like 22 points per game simply on his drives, he averages more drives per game than anyone in the league other than Russell Westbrook, who I believe he's now tied with. That's the kind of production that he's giving you. That's great. He puts his head down. He's lethal. He can finish through contact. Excellent. But I still think at times he's, at, in this game at least, a little reckless with the ball and uh, a little bit of tunnel vision. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be too hard on him because obviously look at how great he's been throughout the bubble play, throughout the season in general. It is what it is. By his standards, it was an okay game. He was not the difference maker here like KP was. This was the KP game, and we kind of squandered it, and the refs helped us squander that, unfortunately. Uh, meanwhile, KP, I forgot to call out earlier. He also had two blocks, by the way. Trey Burke plays in favor of Seth Curry, who was out, still recovering, uh, resting, I should say, with his strained ha uh, not hamstring, calf muscle. And so Trey Burke... In the first half, he had like six quick assists. He ends up with 12 points, nine assists, four rebounds. That's great production. I love me some Trey Burke at this point. He is exactly what this team needs. The efficient secondary ball handler, and he's actually shown himself to be a pretty reliable, pretty respectable outside shooter. Um, two of two um, at the line, excuse me, two of four from three, two of two at the line, four of nine overall on the game. Now, I will say this. His impact, he made his biggest impact early in this game, and then he kind of wavered, and then, of course, he's involved in the controversial play at the end, which I'll get into. But uh, Trey Burke, I would love to see him on Dallas still and playing next season as well. I really, what he's doing now, I was wanting to see out of him last year when he came over in the Porzingis trade, but it never really seemed like he was given an opportunity there. Now it seems like he's really found a niche for himself here, so hopefully we give him some more of that. Dorian Finney-Smith, another great game out of him. 15 points, four boards, six of eight from the field, including some aggressive drives. Three of five on three and should be four of six because he is flat robbed of possibly a game winner. Like, it would have been a game winner. Uh, obviously, Portland would have gotten one more crack at it, and Dame is Dame, so who knows. But uh, he gets robbed. Again, we'll get to that. Maxi, I thought, had a good game. 12 points, 4 of 9 from the field. He hits a couple big threes. He's jawing at times with various members of the Blazers, which is kind of funny because Maxi is not that kind of temperament. So when Maxi's jawing with you a little bit, you're like, the hell did Portland say to him? You know, like it's it's weird. And he gives you a block and two steals as well. I felt like Maxi had a good game even if the threes came late, but they weren't a high percentage, 3 of 8. Um, he struggled for much of the game, but it seemed like he dialed in a little bit when he needed to. Uh, beyond that, not a whole lot to write home about. I think Justin Jackson, he got eight minutes. He looked out of place. Carmelo was abusing him on the low block. Portland has found certainly something with Carmelo that OKC couldn't find, that uh, Houston couldn't find. Carmelo 
his career renaissance seems very much in line with how they're utilizing him. But he was abusing Justin Jackson in his eight minutes, and then it doesn't help that Justin Jackson blew two layups and uh, bricked a three as well. So I think at this point you need to start saying, like, all right, well, Jackson's not being a difference maker. MKG, even in super limited minutes the past two games, um, is making a difference. Even if he's got seven points in 93 career minutes as a Maverick, he's got seven points, two of which come in this game on an and one, although he fails to convert it. But uh, his defense, his versatility, and his tough nose rebounding make a difference. He was a plus 21 in the game the other night without shooting a damn shot. In this game, he's a plus, I think, plus three. Um, he does get a shot in this one, obviously, but I think he needs more of those minutes. I think he needs those minutes that Jackson's been getting because I don't think Jackson's got it right now. Um, yeah, so this is this is frustrating. So let's get into the end of it here. Uh, the Mavericks are going back and forth, even after the controversial KP fouls, both of them that knocked KP out of the game. By the way, Nurkic got knocked out in there as well under a minute left when Luka got his and one and then failed to knock down the free throw that led to um, you know the one point, I think it was deficit at the time. That all came about and fouled. That fouled out Nurkic, and then that came back to bite the Mavericks as... You're basically in a shootout with Dame and, to a lesser extent, Carmelo Anthony. And while you are getting big threes from Maxi and from uh, Dodo, knocked down a couple as well, you're just not you're not doing enough. Like the ball movement's good, but you get in a situation where um, the Mavericks great ball movement around to the edge, drive baseline does Trey Burke, and he kicks it out to a wide open in the corner. Dorian Finney-Smith. Dorian Finney-Smith pulls up for three with four seconds left and knocks the mother effer down. Unfortunately, Trey Burke also knocked the mother effer being Dame Lillard down. And offensive foul call. The referee, before, before Dorian even released the shot, the ref had already called the offensive foul. And it's a frustrating play because, I've, one, I feel like it's a flop. I've watched the replay six or seven times, um, literally just since. I ran this show earlier, this post-game show, and I realized I had a technical error and my audio was trashed. And so this is me re-recording it. Between shows, I've watched it six or seven more times. I probably watched it a dozen times between the game itself and then after the game. Dame fouls, or Dame flops on the play, but worse, he runs in, it's actually more of him running into Trey. Because Trey passes, Dame jumps to Trey's right, and as Trey is clearing out away from uh, Dodo to give him an open shot, Dame, having jumped in front of him, leans into him, and then he falls down. Burke's, uh, Burke doesn't even fall. Trey Burke doesn't even fall in the play. He stumbles, but Dame hits the ground as if he's been speared by Bill Goldberg, and uh, offensive foul. So that's that's the game. You don't like in those moments to see that play happen. That is a that is a dog shit way to end a great game. This was a great game. Now Portland had to have this. If they lost, they were done. The Mavericks, they were statistically still possible to or excuse me, mathematically still capable of moving up to the 6 seed over OKC, but they were pretty much locked in for the most part. But this was a playoff atmosphere type game, and you got some great performances up and down your roster. You just don't want to waste those performances, but that's what ended up happening. In the end, Dame Lillard, if you put anyone else in that spot, it doesn't matter. Now, Lillard, I don't again, I don't want to take away from him. The dude was 21 points on 11 shots at like the half, 17 of 32 for the game, 9 of 17 for 3, um, 18 of 18 at the line. Dude's, dude's insane. Like, he had a, like a 40-foot shot at one point. That back iron went 40 feet up in the air and then dropped in, like, perfect. I mean, just asinine bounces that he makes. And that just speaks to his greatness. But, man, when you're already having to go toe-to-toe with a guy like that who's now more focused and driven than ever before, and then on top of that you feel like you got to fight officials, that's not great. 
it's frustrating too that CJ McCollum had eight points on the game, and you know after the offensive foul call uh, on Burke, Dallas has to foul the inbound pass. It goes to McCollum. He's 75, 76% this year, but he's throughout most of his career, I, from what I understand, been more about the high 80s, low 90s. He knocks down both, and Dallas, with a three-point lead, decides, okay, it's going to be just like the first game in the bubble where when Houston was down three, they inbounded to Harden, we immediately fouled to put them on the line. So we're not going to let them foul us on the catch. We're going to catch and immediately shoot. Well, Hardaway Jr. catches it in the corner and shoots basically a fading, drifting out of bounds shot, clanks it off the side of the backboard. It's disgusting, and that ends the game. But it's uh, it's frustrating that McCollum, their second best guy, gets eight points on only two of fourteen shooting, and you lose. Now Carmelo stepped up in a big way. Like I said, twenty six and eight. That's a great game out of Carmelo Anthony, and he did a lot of work on the post, not just when Jackson was on him, but. He, he did work against pretty much anybody he faced. Nurkic, 6-9, uh, and nine, you know, he did he did pretty nice for them, but it wasn't anything crazy. Uh, Zach Collins, 11-8 and eight for them. Gary Trent Jr., 11 points as well. Hassan Whiteside, I thought, gave them some great minutes, 8-8-1. Eight, eight and one. He has essentially the game winner on his dunk um, there as they draw. Dame draws in the pressure, uh, causes Maxi to come up. Gives a nice bounce pass dump off for a dunk for Whiteside. And then that precedes the then Dorian Finney-Smith three-point attempt that would have seesawed Dallas ahead and instead pretty much wrapped up the game. Dallas was down one. They would have gone ahead by two. And here's the thing, like, you can stand if you lose a game because Dame Lillard, a la Paul George, pulls up from 45 feet and drops a teardrop in your eye. You can live with that. It still hurts like hell, but you can live with that. It's worse when you feel like the game was taken out of your hands, which between the KP foul out, uh, both of those fouls that came in like the final couple minutes there, between that and then Dorian Finney-Smith getting robbed of what would have been his first game winner possibly of his career, that sucks. That really, really sucks, but... You know, it is what it is. You, I, say, I say it again. You put any other blazer or... You know, the vast majority of NBA players in that situation, same exact situation, they don't get the foul call. Dame was getting everything he wanted. He So much so, he literally thought he could grab KP by the waist and convince the ref that KP was who fouled him. Crazy. But it's, uh, that's the way it goes. Mavericks are the 7 seed. Blazers are going to keep fighting. Thankfully, we're done with them. We're not going to see them again. So... It's an exciting basketball game and a nice playoff preview. Mavericks got the Suns left, who are now 7-0 after beating the 76ers. Suns are playing for their lives. I doubt the Mavericks put up much effort in this because they got nothing to gain. You might as well rest your guys some more. Maybe give them a little taste of the action and then call it. In this game, the Mavericks actually outshot the Blazers 52% to 47%. They won the three-point battle 45% compared to 39 um, and knocked down 23s at that compared to just 15 for Portland. Portland, though, was ice cold and like ice water in their veins, I should say, at the foul line. They were 27 of 29 for 93%. Dallas was 27 of 33, so 82% for Dallas compared to 93% for them. And the free throws were basically even. Actually, Dallas shoots a little bit more, four more free throws, but you know misses a couple big ones there in the fourth quarter. The problem is Dallas is turnovers. I mentioned Luka kind of having a rough go of it, but they didn't close out quarters well, and they were sloppy with the ball. 17 turnovers compared to just 8 for Portland. They do win the assist battle 28-18, to but they're out-rebounded by 11, plus out-rebounded by 7 on the offensive glass. Uh, Portland is generating steals left and right, including Carmelo ripping Luka at one point. Like, that's that's not good. That is not good when you got that going. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. ripped um, ripped Luca at one point too. I thought, and then someone I'm trying to remember who it was that got KP, but someone stripped KP in the low post early in the game, and that was frustrating to see. So it is what it is, man. Learning experience. This is hard nosed basketball. Portland was the more desperate team. They had more to play for, and it kind of panned out that way as well. But. 
We'll see. In the meantime, that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like this video, drop a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect.